everyone. I'm Rachel Newman, like Sandy said, and I am one of the artists here with the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show. The show is in its 93rd year, and I am so sad that we're not together in Philadelphia for the show. And especially because it was my first, gonna be my first year at the show. And I don't get to see everybody and meet and greet and talk and have fun. But because of the, the virus, we're not able to be together. But of course, because of the, uh, the technology that we have, we um, have a, a just all these opportunities to meet and greet around the country. There's somebody coming in. Right here. No. Oh, God. Sorry about that. We just had to let somebody in. So anyway, as I was saying, um, I am so grateful that you have all come to see me today. I'm going to be doing a painting demonstration. And to start out with, I'm going to show you one of my paintings that's already complete. I'm going to use an example of a painting that's called Lighthouse. And I'll show you the different steps of the palette knife work the steps of the palette knife work. And, um, and then after that, I'll give you a studio tour and I'll do the demonstration. And then I'll also answer questions. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat section. You, nobody will be able to actually um, talk during this particular uh, presentation, but you can put your questions in chat and my co-host will be taking a look at those and she's going to communicate with me uh, if I can answer them um, during the during the pre presentation while I'm painting. And if not, I'll just answer them at the end. So please put those there. Now, the other thing that I would like to, to do, um, and I'll have to put those up in a, in a second when I didn't have time before we got started, was some links to the Rittenhouse Square Art Show and through that, you can also find my Zoom uh, for tomorrow. I'm going to be doing what they're calling a virtual booth from 10 to 2 tomorrow on Saturday. And you can just come. It's just a nice time for you to be able to have a relaxed chit-chat conversation with me. You can ask questions about my work, my paintings. You can ask, um, you know, talk about places in your home that you have that you want to put artwork and we can chat about that. And you can come and go as you please. So pl please feel free to come in and see me tomorrow. And then there's also um, going to be a link to my website, rachelnewmanstudios.com, where you can see all of my work uh, that's currently available and learn more about me. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, start with the images of the, um, of the lighthouse. No, no, just that. Okay, so uh, turn just turn the video on. All right, everyone. So we had a little technological snafu, which is so frustrating, but there's so much new things to learn. So evidently, when I was talking to the people, I turned off my I turned off my phone. And I lost the connection to the meeting. Rachel. And so now I've got Rachel. to join again. So thank you for hanging tight here. Now you can see me on my phone. Can you hear me, Rachel? You have to let me in. We can, we can total, Rachel, we can totally hear you and see you. There we go. Just, just to let you know, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. We could totally hear you and see you. I know. I know. Okay. I know. I'm doing the best. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Keep going. Okay. You're doing great. okay. 
All right, so now let me get these images up for you. Oh my God, this is different. Hmm. One second. You know, when you practice things, it all looks right. And then in reality, it's different. So here we go, finally. All right, so what you're seeing here is an image of my lighthouse painting. And you can feel free on your screen to pinch it and make it bigger. And this is the, fin the finished painting. And once you, so this is where, this is the, the finished product, like I said. And then I'm gonna switch to the next slide. This is the palette knife work that I have that I'm gonna start with. This will be part of my demonstration. So you can see that it's very funky, chunky, messy, and you have no idea how it's gonna get from that to the image that you just saw. So this is how I, I do it. And from here, I start adding washes. So you can see I've added light colors into the sky, and I'm starting to bring out a little bit det of detail of the clouds that I want. And then I move through here and you can see I've got some work done on the water where I really lighten things up. I've added some uh, highlights and things like that to soften the painting. I've also added more detail to the clouds. And then this one here is where I've totally softened it even further. And that's the, um, we're getting close to being done. So this is where I start to add details. You can see the clouds are more details. I've added more detail to the land. And then at the end, I add some of the other features, which I don't actually have a slide of. So you can see here that I've done more with the land and I've added in the lighthouse. Now the cameras are very different. So this is more representative of the actual image. So now I'm going to, I'm going to change to a, view, a video view, and give you a little bit of a tour of my, let's see here, Oops, hang on, I don't know where I am, all right, oh, one moment, I just have to change the, oh, maybe they didn't even see that, co-host. Hi there. So I'm hoping you just saw those slides. I bet you didn't. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to my screen share and show you this one more time just in case you didn't see that because I forgot to uh, switch and I think it's still not working. Hang on. Nope, I think this is right now. Okay, I think we're good. That was something new that I learned that at the end. So again, here, this is the lighthouse, the finished image, which you can see is very soft and very you know minimalistic seascape painting. And then, oops, that was the end. <laughs> so this is the palette knife work. So assuming you didn't already see this because I didn't have it on the right screen, this is the palette knife work that is um, very funky, chunky, very abstract. You have no idea how, how and what's going on and how on earth is that gonna get to be this painting. So once I finish that, I move on to the soft palette knife or the, the soft brush stroke. So I'm starting to use the 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 lighter colors and just tone everything down and this one you can see like i said before i'm added more highlights and softened the water i start to add a little bit of detail and then here i've softened it totally brought out some different colors 
and toned it down even more. And then here, back to the final image, I have it on the, um, I've added the, the land and the lighthouse. I don't have an interim image of that, unfortunately. So that's what's, that's what's going on here. And that's part of what I'm gonna show you in the demonstration. So I'm going to switch now and give you a little tour of my studio. And here we are in the studio. This is my painting area over here. This is what we're gonna be working on today. And then these are some paintings that I'm working on. Now, most of the time I have my, my paintings um, that are just in, they're either drying or they're in process on the walls. And today I've switched things around to things that are actually uh, finished. So this uh, boat, which I'm calling, I think, uh, White Sail, is getting close to being done. I'll talk about more of that later, but I've started to add the layers. I'm going to add more to the, to the water. And this one down here is, um, it's just still a little bit too moody. So that one's going to get changed a bit. Up in the corner here, we have one that is just waiting for a boat. And now we'll move over to the, um, these are two that are finished. These are two of the images that are the paintings that are on my virtual gallery with the Rittenhouse Square on the Rittenhouse Square website. The top one is called Reflection, which is just a beautiful dory with its reflection and then a, a red buoy to contrast all the monochromatic uh, tones in it. Below that is called Red Boat, which is one of my kind of, um, you know, very common to what I do with a little spit of land. It's a, technically a seascape, so a little spit of land, a boat, really no people in that. Here, the light is not really great, but you remember the picture of the, the I showed you of the, the lighthouse. Well, that's there on the top, so that one's available. In this one here at the bottom, this is called Lost, one of my favorites. Moving around here, we have one that's called In the Bay. This one I was going to continue on with, and um, that's the one on the top, and, and add more of the, the soft, softness to it. But I just it was really speaking to me here, so I just decided to leave it. This one is called Water. And that is on my website. This one is called Weather, which is really just about these, you know, these just storm clouds rolling in. And that one is um, complete for now, but it might be, uh, I might still work on that one. This one is called Chartreuse Calm. And I just love the tones in that one. So we're going to go back to the, um, the demonstration now. So hang tight while we, while we switch, while we switch around. And where, oh no. Hmm. Okay, well, that didn't work. I am so sorry. Oh, we have to put my video on. That's what it is. There we go. Okay. okay. Here, Here I, I am, am back, back again. again. Hi there. Let's see, is anybody waiting? No, okay. Sorry for that interruption. So this is what we're gonna work on today. This is a painting. We've got some really fun clouds coming through here and then a sunset, some dark water. So it's a, an, evening, an evening image. Now what you're seeing here are the, the um, just you know my drawing so I start out with a pretty specific drawing that shows me where the the shapes the shapes and the colors now of course you can't see this but 
I've got some very big chunks of color. You can see a little bit of what I've started here and then smaller details. So it, um, it just gives me a starting point and then it becomes itself as we continue on. So let's um, go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start, start. And I would love for you to write in any questions if you have any, that would be fantastic. So what I do here is called palette knife work. And so these are some of my palette knives that I'll be using today. You can see they're different sizes, you know, from large to small. And I have lots of them, depending on the, the painting that I'm doing. So I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to work on this section of the painting right now because I, um, that I think I can get done in the amount of time that we have here. I need to mix just a little bit more paint, unfortunately. I ran out. So let me do that. All right. Now, right now, I'm using acrylic paint. And glasses are always very helpful. And, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm just applying the color and it's not anything that you have to worry about not being messy or getting it in the right spot because this is the place where I'm just adding color and shape and texture. So my paintings, as you can see from the, the lighthouse painting, was is very minimalistic and if i just painted a you know a teal background and put a little land and a, a lighthouse or a boat it would be pretty uninteresting i think uh it would just fall flat and so because of the simplicity that i have in this it really needs to be to have depth and we can do that in a couple of different ways. One is with texture, and the other is with color. So this is gonna be part of what happens. And these, these colors that I'm putting on are just gonna, they're gonna bleed through the washes and the, the detailed brush strokes that I do later on. So we'll be working on this painting for a little bit, and then I'm gonna to switch to another one and show you the, the palette knife work. I mean the, um, I'm sorry, the washes. And I think we need to go to a little lighter color here. Give some contrast. So one of the things I was going to mention while I was showing you the, uh, my studio is the, the, the paintings that I showed you on the wall. Of course, you had a terrible time seeing them because the light in here is not gallery light at all. It's a working studio. And so I, to see more about each of the paintings that I showed you, you can go to my website. You can, of course, go to the virtual gallery my virtual gallery in the Rittenhouse Square show and look at the four image, the four paintings that we have. Of course, all of the artists have four offerings on the website. But then uh, you can also go to my website so you can read a little bit more about my perspective on the individual paintings. And you can also see some better images I have things like, um, I have the paintings in, in uh, frames, you know, so you can see what it would look like in a frame. I have some virtual rooms that people can 
look at just to kind of give you an idea of what they might what the painting might look like in your in your space and then you can get a a nice idea of, of how it might look if you hear some thunder in the background we're about to get a storm i think all right Oh, we have a question here. Have you always painted seascapes? And why seascapes? Well, uh, no, I have not always painted seascapes. Actually, in college, I either painted extremely realistic paintings. Looks like I missed a spot here. Um, very, very realistic things. So they were paintings that almost looked like a, like a photograph. And they were very controlled. And I, I always wanted to, well, and then the other sp side of the spectrum was, let's see, where am I here? A little bit white. The other side of the spectrum was very abstract. So for me, it was like all about shape and color um jackson pollock was one of my is one of my favorite painters and i i uh, really liked color how colors blend how colors layered things like that and and yet there was a part of me that was i just wanted hmm, i just wanted to let loose i guess but in a way that impressionists do so that was something that i've always strived for and I, i'm not quite there but there are parts of my paintings where i really am an impressionist and and this uh some of these steps here as a painting evolves i definitely allow the the impressionist in me to come out and really this is one of the the areas that that they it, it comes out so once i start once i finish putting on the, the these layers that i'm putting on now i'm going to actually smear all this to some extent and that obscures all this work that i've done to know what it's going to look like i'm going to change and then that forces me to really be an impressionist it forces me to do do things that are uncomfortable for me it, it, and and then the painting takes on really a life of its own which is pretty fun and scary <laughs> uh, sometimes and and why seascapes well like sandy said at the beginning uh i have spent a lot of time on the water i'm just i'm a water creature I, for me it's all about water i love I love water. I love um, the beach, whether it's a, a pond or an ocean or a lake, it doesn't really matter. Even a swimming pool, I'm a swimmer. And uh, it's, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. I'm just drawn to the water. And my husband and I spent uh, almost two years on our sailboat um, a, a number of years ago. And you know, I just had an opportunity to just stare at the sea, stare at the sky, and it's really a very, um, oh, meditative, I guess I would call it. It's a very meditative process. And I started seeing these, these seascapes, and I thought I wanted one. Um, I thought I would buy somebody else's, really. I wanted one for my dining room table by my dining room and I started looking and I just could never find them. And I, you know, I just had these images in, in my mind's eye and I just wanted to, I wanted to create that. And so I started, you know, thinking about it. It took a couple of years really for me to think about it. And, you know, I was a little reluctant to change the body of work that I had 
had been doing. Let's see, almost done here. And uh, so, see I'm putting these little, little patches in and those are gonna smear. And because I'm working with acrylic paint here, I want to stop at this point, or really close to it anyway, and smear these together. Now, I work with both oil and acrylic paint. The first step is typically acrylic because I like, I like the texture. I like that it dries quickly, uh, both when I'm doing the, the palette knife work and then when I'm doing the, the uh, washes, I really like the oil paint. So I'm moving to, here it is, a larger palette knife now. And I'm gonna just start to smear some of this, so to speak. I'm flattening down the texture a little bit because I don't want too much texture, but I also want these this to meld into one another. So we're gonna do that. And then this starts to, to kind of become something very different than what it started out to be. And then when I start to the, go to the next step, it is already a different painting than what I had in my mind. And it starts to become itself. So I think right now, I was hoping to get a little bit further, but our technical difficulties at the beginning here caused me to uh, be a little off on time. So we're gonna switch now to a different painting. And I already have the paint set up for this so I'm going to take this one down and move on to the next one so this is this is one that I did the palette knife work on earlier this week. And I don't know, it's always really interesting. Even myself, when I, when I make, when I'm painting, I still, I have no idea how one becomes the other. I just don't know. So I'm gonna switch up my paint. And get the other paint here that I've prepared. Here we go. Now, like I was saying, normally I move on to oil paint at this point, but because of the demonstration, I'm gonna just stick with, um, with acrylic paint. So I'm using water to thin it a little bit. I also use some gel medium in the paint. And I have lots of different brushes that I use. So some are round. I tend to use those later on for detail. Dry brushing with this one. This one I like for clouds. And I have a lot of flat brushes. And even some real wide ones. Again, I use these more for for dry brushing. So, so this is a an, this is an evening sky. So you're seeing all these uh, salmon colors, which are. And, and clouds, so it's kind of like a blue sky, and then there's this puffy sam salmon colored clouds coming um, on after over the top of them. The horizon line is about here, 
and then this is all water. You're seeing a little bit, these reds and oranges, you're seeing a little bit of a reflection from the, the clouds. So I'm gonna do, let's see, I need a little bit of, well, we'll just wait on that. So I'm gonna start with, actually I'm gonna start with the blue. So I have the, kind of a medium blue color right here mixed with white. And I'm just starting to go over the top of this. You see how I just covered up that, that white. And as I, oops, as I add, as, as I add layers, I just kind of take a look at well, what do I want it to what do I want it to look like? So do you see here? Yeah, you can not see that too well. This dark color here, I just muted it down. Totally. And then I'm gonna mute some of these. The colors are gonna start to blend into one another. So I'm just going the teal areas and the salmon will come through the teal or the blue and the blue will come through the, the, the salmon now these are pretty much complementary colors so if I mix them together I'll end up with more of a gray you know, a much more muted muted tone which is kind of what I want to do in this area. I want to tone that down really a lot. So this first layer goes pretty quick. Let's see if there's some other questions. Um, let's see. Where did you learn your technique? <laughs> well, uh, I did, I did, I went to art school. Um, so I learned a lot about color principles. I think that was what I really, really enjoyed most about art school were the color principles that I learned. And um, I used to do uh, paintings, they were stained canvases. So it was acrylic paint that was poured and it was all about the layers. But what I do now, as far as the layers here of the, the palette, the palette knife work to start, and then the, the washes like I'm doing now, I just made it up. <laughs> I, nobody, I don't, I don't, I just made it up. I was just experimenting. And that's really what's, what I find most interesting about painting the painting process a lot of times is it just it just happens if you're paying attention and you allow transition to occur even when it's uncomfortable you're like i always have something planned i'm just i'm a plant and so i always have things in my mind that i really want it to be a certain way but then reality you know, strikes, you know, well, I would love to be in Philadelphia right now, but I'm not. I'm here in my studio and we're on Zoom, which is still great, but it's not what I expected. And so part of that painting process is, is that as well. And so I had done, you know, when I started this current body of work, I, I tried a bunch of different ways to get the depth that I wanted. Cause I knew, you know, when I described what I wanted to do to people, I said, they're gonna look very simple, but they're not gonna be. And they have to have a lot of painting underneath to have depth. So I'm gonna move on here to the, the salmon color. And we're gonna start to tone those down. 
so it's, I guess, how did I learn my technique is really the, what I'm doing now is just through experimentation. And I, uh, I typically have used brushes, but I really, I picked up my palette knife just to, I don't know why I did actually. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I really like that. And so I went with it. And then I started adding layers. And before you knew it, before you know it, I had, I had something else going. So see here now I'm going to start to blend these colors together. You see how that went from a kind of a blue, the brighter blue by putting this over this other one. Now I've softened that color. And I really want that to be a lot softer still. So eventually, when I add more layers, I'll, I'll add more. So I did want to mention, so you've seen me work on two paintings now, and you're not seeing a whole lot because painting takes time. And that's great. And so you might be curious what these are going to turn into. Well, I am too. <laughs> and let me get a little bit of this white up here. This is peach up here. So I, uh, I have everybody's email list from the, from the Zoom registration, but then there's also, um, what was I going to say? Oh, you can go to my website. I'll probably put a blog post up uh, keeping you posted on how these work out with some of the images in the in between. And uh, I can send you an email with, with how it turns out and that kind of thing as well. So now I'm just finishing up this area. Let's see if we can take one more question before I stop. What do you want the viewer to see and feel when you look at your work? Um, what I want you to see, is what you don't see. Um, and that might sound a little esoteric, but I want you to think about, it's, it's kind of like the, the layers of my paintings. You're not gonna know that this is here, but I want you to know that it's here in an essence. So there's a lot of mist in my mist and clouds. And um, I want you to think about well, what is behind the mist and what's behind the clouds? You know, is, you know, there's mist covering a bay. What does a bay look like? Uh, things like that. The other component to it for me is just, I want people to feel, for a lot of the paintings, I mean, my signature paintings, just a sense of calm, of serenity, I guess. Um, I had one, I had one woman and she looked at one of the, I think it was Red Boat when it was first, when I, when I finished it. And she said, oh, I could just be there all day long. It's so relaxing. And so that's one of the things that I really want, want people to feel is just, it's a place to disconnect from all the day-to-day the -day life that we have going on here. So I'm going to stop at this point and answer a one more question, but before I do that, let me just um, remind you that there is um, that you can come and talk with me tomorrow uh, on Zoom, and from ten to two. I wasn't able to get the link up. I'm terribly sorry for that. However, you can go to RittenhouseSquare.com and click Virtual Booths, and you'll be able to find me uh, the link to that. You can also um, find other artists and their demonstrations like I'm doing here today and other virtual, virtual booths where you can pop in and out of, of, of different uh, artist studios and see what they're up to. I will also have my four images, my four paintings available on the Rittenhouse Square virtual boo uh virtual what are you calling it there's so many different words virtual gallery and then don't forget to check out my website rachelnewmanstudios.com 
And there's a link to that on my, on my page there at the, uh, the Rittenhouse Square as well. There you can see uh, more details with all about all the paintings and you can also see the images that aren't currently available on, um, online. And uh, again, just thank you so much for coming. So I think we have time for one more. Let's see. Yeah, we've got about, we've got about three minutes. Oh, uh, with this layering approach, how many hours do you plan for start to finish? Um, how do you know when a painting is, oh, how, do you, how many hours do you plan from start, from the start of the process to a completed piece? And how do you know when a painting is done? Oh, well, those are good questions. <laughs> um, I don't plan anything because I just don't know how long it's going to take. But in, in my experience with these paintings, they're, they take somewhere between a day and a half and a really long time. So it just depends on whether they come together. I always say that they, they take on a life of their own. So at some point here between this palette knife work and these, the, the washes, it just starts to come to life. And it's just a really cool process. There's typically a point in time where I think I've absolutely wrecked the painting. It's like, nope, it's just not possible. It's never going to be anything. I'm just going to throw it out or paint over it or something like that. Um, but I keep going. And that's why I say it becomes the, the piece. There are paintings that I have hanging that I've worked on for several years where they just haven't decided what they want to be yet. Or a lot of times they'll hang for at certain stages for drying if I'm doing a lots of layers, because I'll probably put this painting, I did, you know, it's very bold, a good 10 layers at least. Um, so that's kind of the answer to the question. And um, when you know when it's done, when it tells me <laughs> that it's done. And I can think that it's done and it has to hang and pass kind of the, the hang test. So I'll, I'll look at it and decide and then eventually decide that it's, it's done. Uh, and sometimes I'll go back to it. So we are pretty much out of time. And yeah, so I, I wanna to again, take this so opportunity much. to thank you for joining me here in my studio in Bluffton, South Carolina. And I really look forward to seeing you all next year at the show live. Hopefully our pandemic is toned down and we can get back to our normal lives. In the meantime, I hope that you can join me tomorrow uh, in my studio here on Zoom from 10 to 2. You, again, come and go as you wish. And that way we can, we can actually talk instead of just me talking. I'd love to get to know my customers and we can get to know me a little bit more too. So with that said, we're going to sign off. Thank you so much and please stay healthy and we'll see you soon.